What is up everybody? It is Joe. I am back with a new video. And so today, I figured I'd actually do something a little bit different today. And I'd make a tier list on the 2024 GOP primary and who I think would be a good candidate and not so good and in between. So we have a lot of options here. I want to thank Real American Politics for making this video that he made because I got inspiration from it. I'd also like to thank Red Eagle Politics for making his video and this list. And without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to start by explaining what tiers are going to mean what in this one. So S is going to be, you know, someone that I personally would want to run. A is going to be someone who I would vote for, but, you know, they're still good, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. B is mid-tier, but at the end of the day, they're a good candidate. C would be mid-tier, but probably not a good candidate. D is not a good candidate, and F is no fucking way I would vote for that person. So, without further ado, we'll start. First up is Steve Bannon. Now, Steve is going to go in the D category. He does have good policies, but the thing is, Steve Bannon is an interesting character, and I, I don't really see him being ever a good candidate. He's good at putting candidates up, I guess you can say, but in his own being a candidate, I don't ever see that being viable. The next one is Dan Bogino. Now, I think Bogino is very solid on a lot of issues. I really do, but at the end of the day, I don't think he is. It, it sounds very elitist in a way, but I just don't think he's ma like the material you want for a presidential candidate. In the sense that it's kind of like banned in the sense that he's never really been there. It's more of just giving good takes, and by all means, they're good takes, but... As for presidential material, I don't see it. Now, this one may piss a few people off, but this is, of course, all my opinion. Candace Owens, I honestly put her at a D. Because it seems that her entire... It's not even it seems. It, frankly, her entire clout politically is just her being a black conservative. One, that I don't believe in fucking diversity hiring in any sense and that's basically why her entire rise to fame was because she was black let's be completely honest here that's why she has the political clout she does combine that with the fact is i don't think she really can grasp anything that's not domestic because i mean yes domestic politics policies of course matter but at the end of the day when you're president all your policies matter same with four pal all that shit and i don't think candace owens from the takes i've seen her give has the slightest clue on how to guide foreign policy. Her monetary policy is probably correct, given I haven't really admittedly like studied her economic policies. But all, all really she has is decent social commentary and the fact that she's a black woman. Outside of that, I don't really see what valuable skills she can really give to being a, a president of the United States. The next one is going to be more interesting in the sense that I would never vote for this guy if my life depended on it. So Charlie Baker. The thing with Charlie Baker is he's he's a Republican, but he, he was a governor of Massachusetts, and his entire views reflect him being from Massachusetts, if you can catch my drift there. Overall, probably the best Massachusetts had, but... In no way is he going to be a good president for the Republican Party. He's basically a liberal. In a lot of ways, the dude's a, a very conservative-leaning Democrat more than he is an actual Republican. And I don't think I need to say much about that. Susan Rice, I'm going to have to give her a D as well on the basis that, I mean, she's you know not as bad as Charlie Baker, but... Susan Rice does not have a great track record, and I think the Bush admin's entire debacle that you can call that an admin is proof of that, considering how influential she was in that. Dan Crenshaw is going to get a C from me, in a sense. I really would probably not want this guy to ever run for president, and he is a Zio shill in a lot of ways, but at the end of the day, like... He's also not terrible. On certain issues, he is very good. However, Dan Crenshaw is in no way like a great candidate to run for presidential material. 
Now, Brian Kemp, on the other hand, is going to get a D as well. The D category is probably going to swell up eventually with some of these other people coming up. But Brian Kemp's just not a good Republican. Everyone let's talk, well, he, he won Georgia. Yeah, Georgia's going blue. Everyone knows that. The reason Georgia is staying with Brian Kemp is because he can play to those voters. He can, you know why he can do that? He can do that because he's not really that conservative. And, again, don't don't get me started when it came to the 2020 election when everyone in Georgia was shitting their pants about it and Brian Kemp's at fucking bulldog football games and not really doing his job. He, he's a decent governor for Georgia, but Georgia's going blue when I really – don't think this guy in any way, shape, or form will be a good president of the United States at all. Eric Trump, I'll give him a C on the basis that he seems to have a decent grasp at politics in a lot of ways. I'll, I'll say that. Um, his issue, though, is I think it's kind of, I guess you can say like a print sort of thing where a lot of his political clout just be comes from him being the son of his dad. However, I will say from everything I have seen Eric say on a lot of political issues, he seems to actually kind of know what he's talking about. So I think he has good takes, though I don't really see him being a good candidate. Matt Gates, I'll give a B. Do I really want Matt Gates to run for president or let alone be the president? Honestly, probably not really. But... Out of the people we've went through so far, I think he's probably the best bet out of all these people that are on the list of the board because he has good takes, he has good views, and overall he is a solid dude. I think a lot of his, I guess you can say, faults that he's been attacked on are honestly pretty flimsy in a sense that it's more just less of a moral thing as it's, well, he's Matt Gates, so we're going to use those fuck-ups, which are fuck-ups, no doubt. We're going to use those against him. And I don't think that's really fair, and I think that would definitely hurt him in a presidential run. And I don't think he is quite up to the job just yet, at least. However, I think he's good where he's at. But if it came down to out of everyone else on here, I think at the end of the day, he's probably the most solid candidate that we've went through so far. Now, Greg Abbott, on the other hand, I will give a C. Greg Abbott, I think overall is decent i don't think he's probably the best however i think he's done a, a good thing a good amount of things i really should say for texas however i don't think greg abbott is going to be able to basically be fdr2 in the eyes of the public in a way with it is the best way i can put it i don't think that's really going to happen and at the end of the day i think he's probably better off staying in texas or just maybe in that region of the country i don't really see any lateral or forward movement for him especially upwards in the chain to become someone big within the entire country i don't see that happening but at the end of the day his policies are pretty good i'd say overall now nikki haley i've discussed this one already it I, there's no way in hell i'd ever vote for nikki haley uh, i think my video i just did on her recently uh, covered everything i got to say about her and i'm going to leave it at that if Shameless plug here, but yes, if you want to know how I feel about Nikki Haley, feel free to go back and watch the video I just made about her. I think it was probably five days ago by the time this gets uploaded. Larry Hogan, no way in hell I'd vote for him. It's much the same with Charlie Baker in a way, so there's really not much else that has to be said about that. Ivanka Trump, no way in hell I'd vote for her. I mean, she's essentially a liberal. Her and her husband, Jared, basically strong arm than Trump admin to being a lot more liberal than it had to be, as well as her husband doing other things, such as the bidding for foreign countries. However, I digress. She is, outside of her being related to Donald Trump, she has basically zero understanding of politics, and every take she has given has been the most milquetoast liberal takes there are, and there's... No justification on why anybody who calls themselves a conservative would vote for Ivanka Trump. You'll probably get some, like, cumbrain fucking boomer that would say, oh, well, she's hot, so, but, but that's not what we're doing here. We're talking about policy, and she would be terrible. Josh Hawley, this is going to be a little hard, because I'm um, split. I think I'm going to put him in A on the basis that I don't want him to run just yet. I think... 
time will probably benefit Josh Hawley over time. Even though I, that was a redundant statement, wasn't it? But I think time will benefit him. I think he's good where he's at right now in the Senate. I overall have very positive opinions of Josh Hawley. And I think he may be good presidential material for the future. But for now, I would like him to stay in the Senate. His views are pretty solid. He seems to have a solid record. Despite what people want to say that don't like him. Overall, the guy is pretty clean. And I just think it's not exactly the right time. But I think he's good material for a candidate. Mike Pence. Oh, this one's going to be interesting. Mike Pence. So Mike Pence, if we're speaking entirely on his views, on his views, I'd put him as a B. Do I want Mike Pence to run? Should. Do I think he should run ever again? No. But if we're speaking on his views that he runs on, I think Mike Pence, on that basis, would be a very solid Republican candidate. However, after everything that's happened with him and the Trump admin and just the way everything's gone with that, I think that's probably not a good idea. As well as the fact that there's personal things that he said as of late that I also don't like. He kind of holds himself up to a standard that he thinks he's at that he really isn't personally. But if we're speaking on how his char- like how charismatic he is and his actual like policies that he had when he was the governor of Indiana, for example, I think Mike Pence, under that circumstances, would be a, a solid candidate. Christy Noem, I'm going to give a D on the basis that she's more of a rhino. A lot of her views are kind of are very milk toast. I wouldn't say kind of; they're very milk toast. Um, and it's more of the kind of the thing you see with Ivanka Trump, where it's like, oh. Well, good-looking lady, hoo-hoo-hoo, but she really has no substance to any of her beliefs, it seems, and let's not forget Tucker Carlson was valid when he called her out in, I think it was April, yeah, it was April of 2021, when it came to her flip-flopping on the transgender issue, when it came to sports within her own state, it seems that she kind of just plays the wind of whatever way it's blowing, and that's how she'll vote, which I mean, fine, that keeps her in South Dakota, good for her, but I don't think that will be positive at all for a presidential candidate. Lindsey Graham is going to get a D on the basis that it's Lindsey Graham. I don't think I need to say much about that. At the end of the day, there are times why we'll defend him because I think a lot of people genuinely, and for good reason, don't like Lindsey Graham. And I think that the smallest mistake the man will make, people will attack him for. With that said, I don't agree with him on a lot of things at all, and I think that he'll be very – he will not be very tough on an international stage if he becomes president. When it comes, especially when it comes to foreign policy, I think Lindsey Graham would be nothing more than a glorified pushover. And because of that, I am going to have to forgo wanting him to run. Now, Marco Rubio, I will give a C. It's much like Lindsey Graham, but – I think he's less hated overall, and by me even personally, I don't dislike him as much as I dislike Lindsey Graham. I don't think Marco Rubio is is going to be a good president, but I don't think he'd be as bad as a president as, again, Lindsey Graham. However, I think the situation for those two are very comparable in a way. Now, Mike Lindell, I have to give a D because it's basically Steve Bannon all over again. I, I I like Mike very much, actually. I think... He's a good guy, but I also think since the whole 2020 election, he's kind of went off the deep end mentally a little bit. And I think as a result of that, as well as the fact that optics-wise, if this guy ever had to run a campaign, it would be such a shit show that it wouldn't even be worth really dealing with. And I think for those reasons, it's why Mike Lindell is a bad candidate to run. Now, this one's probably going to piss some people off. But I think Mike Pompeo is honestly a B. And I'll say why. See, the thing with Mike Pompeo is domestically, I think he's very good on the, on the social conservatism issues. I think economically he's pretty solid. And even on most foreign policy, he's very solid. My issue with Mike Pompeo, and this is an issue a lot of people on the right have with him, and I, I, I don't try to count this too much against certain candidates unless it's really heavy-handed. 
because at this point you really can't get away with it. But with Mike Pompeo, this is something you need to say because his religious views influence what he does. And his religious views is also something he cites for why he has such a strong support for the state of Israel to a point where it comes to just sacrificing our own national security in some way of just always having to stick our necks out for a country that really does not help ours out that much. And for those reasons, that that causes some friction, especially with a lot of people towards Mike Pompeo. I think that's his biggest issue, and that's why I really don't think he's the best candidate. I put him in the mid category for that. However, overall, I think on a lot of issues, if you actually like see what Mike Pompeo says and how he talks about how he feels about these situations, I think he's not as bad as some people like to say he is. With that said, I don't really see him being a great candidate on that entire aspect due to the fact that his Israel support seems to be very strong to a questionable degree. Now, Paul Ryan is... <laughs> yeah, Paul Ryan's Paul Ryan, so uh, that's going to go here. I don't necessarily hate Paul Ryan, but the dude is a full-fledged rhino, and... Yeah, I don't think I need to say much about that. If you're on this channel, chances are you feel the same way about Paul Ryan, and I don't think I need to elaborate too far. Now, when it comes to Mr. Rand here, Mr. Rand Paul, I'd probably put him in the C range on the basis that he is a bit of a libertarian. And the thing with libertarians to me is simply put, as libertarians kind of... The thing with libertarianism, and I, I kind of addressed this in, a, in my pacifist video, is that the entire thing with libertarianism, it's kind of just no militarism when it comes to the United States, but every other country can. So we're big defenders of liberty. We want liberty and all that, except we're only going to do it if the U.S. government infringes it anywhere. So the U.S. government infringes on a hostile country. We're going to have a problem with that because we're libertarians, but if other countries are fucking with ours in the same way, well, that it's whatever. It's not our government. Libertarians tend to be very fifth columnist unwillingly when it comes to a lot of other issues on foreign policy that I don't like, and that's one of my biggest reasons against libertarianism. I think libertarianism's biggest, I guess you could say Achilles heel, is just people that are libertarians. And for those reasons is why I don't really trust Rand Paul to be a good president in the sense that I, I don't trust his libertarian leanings at all to be good on foreign policy. I think on domestic policy, I won't agree with everything he does as because he is libertarian leaning. However, he's not as bad as his dad, I will say. Despite me having respect for Ron Paul, I think Ron Paul is a bit of an idiot, especially on foreign policy. But when it comes to Rand... I think domestically he probably won't be too bad, but foreign policy, I, I cannot trust someone with libertarian leanings like that to effectively not make the U.S. weak on the world stage at all. When it comes to Mitt Romney, that's an F. Uh, I'll put it this way. My parents voted for him in 2012. He was the best we had at the time, it seemed. With that said, Mitt Romney's a complete idiot, and pretty much, well, uh, if he ever – he, he won't see this video, but if he ever decides to uh, throw his hat in the ring again, I'll simply say for this race, uh, Mitt, you lost in 2012. Your chances are done, dude. The Republican Party isn't what it was, and since you've been in Senate or House, I really have don't pay attention to him, so I honestly can't even tell you which chamber he's in. You have kind of just fucked over the GOP every chance you could get, so uh, fuck you, Mitt. Ron DeSantis. Uh, people may not like this one, but I'm going to put S on the basis that I think Ron DeSantis may be one of our top guys. I really do. I think Ron DeSantis has the optics. I, I don't know if he'll be as strong on the world stage as, say, like Donald Trump was in the sense that he – Donald Trump had a, a good thing going for him on the world stage. I won't really discuss it too much until I get to him on this list. However – I don't think Ron DeSantis possesses that. However, domestically, I think Ron DeSantis will be quite good for the country. I think he's done great things in Florida. I do question a bit his ability to enact such changes nationwide compared to Florida, though at this point, I think Ron DeSantis it would be a great candidate, and I would, if, he, if it came down to it, 
and he was running for president as the sole candidate, I'd vote for him, 100%. Now, Ben Sass, uh, I would say F. I was leaning towards D because he isn't as bad as, say, everyone else in here. How, the thing is, though, Ben Sass kind of just loves to be this contrarian against Donald Trump in a way that he almost felt better off sticking with the left politically just so he could spite Donald Trump in a lot of ways. And I don't really – I'm not the big guy who's like, oh, we got to be loyal to one person. I've never really said that. I think that's kind of stupid. With that said, I – just the fact that he was willing to sell out the GOP and the right in general just to spite one man shows enough that this man should not be near the White House at all. Rick Scott is an interesting case. I, I, I have to debate whether I want to put Rick Scott in B or an A. If I really could, he'd kind of be in the middle. So... I think I'll lean towards putting Rick Scott in B. Actually, I, I think I put Rick Scott in A. Because Rick Scott's policies on the, uh, are, I think, pretty solid. I think it's kind of hard to find anything. When you look at his track record when he was governor of Florida, I think Rick Scott was pretty solid. There are some things that I do have questions about when it comes to just how he feels about very certain subjects, and that's why I'm not putting him in S. However, overall, from what it, you, when you look at like the, just the pure blank slate, and then you see what he's done with his governor of Florida, I really can't speak tonight, governor of Florida, how he's been in the Senate, I think Rick Scott is overall decent enough to where I can put him in the A column. However, S, it doesn't really just work out for him on the basis that there are questions surrounding how he is about very specific issues. Okay. Okay, so I've had a drink now, so that should probably help out how I was speaking, so I was getting a little winded there. Scott Walker. I am actually quite the fan of Scott Walker, so that's why he'll be put in the A. I think Scott Walker overall is actually really good. I think he's a good politician. I think he's a good conservative man. I think his... His comments about what was going on in Syria back in 2015, some people found them to be a little neocon war hawk-like. I wouldn't go as far to say that. He wasn't advocating openly, at least, for like an overthrow of the Assad regime. Because, I mean, given, like I said, I don't really care about Assad, but it's on the basis that we didn't really need to do it. He wasn't really advocating for that. However, he also did advocate a much more militaristic approach against ISIS in Syria than a lot of other people were. And some people may not like that. I personally can't say I have an issue with that. When it comes to his domestic policies, I think he's very solid. I haven't really seen anything I personally disagree with overall, given considering how he hasn't really been in politics that much, I should say, since he's gotten out of office in 2018, or I should say early 2019. I think him running in a primary with other people on this board would be more or less not too good for him. However, I think he is politically at least a solid guy. Ted Cruz, I'm going to put in the B. The reason he's getting B is overall I think Ted Cruz is actually pretty good politically. However, I'm not going to give him as bad as a C for that. However, I'm not going to put him in A because Ted Cruz has had his moments where you kind of just sit there and think, what the fuck's going on, Ted? There there are times where Ted Cruz seems to be kind of off in his own world, I will say. However, that was mostly, I'd say, at the very beginning of the Trump presidency. I'd argue since the 2018 midterms, Ted Cruz has been a lot more solid. The issue with that, and like I said, is why he will not get an A here, is are we going to have to hold his feet to the fire kind of like that the whole time if he becomes president? Can we trust him to stay on course, or is he going to veer off? And I do not know the thing with Ted Cruz. I really don't know. Now, this one's going to be much more interesting. The issue with Tom Scott here is... He's he said things on one hand that are very positive. On the other hand, he said things that you could just chalk up to... 
like the 1990s version of a Democrat, in a sense. So I don't really know. I, I think I'd give him a C. I do not think he will be a good candidate, though he has made some statements that are overall pretty good. I think he isn't really relevant enough to run, so I don't even worry at the moment. Tom Cotton, I will give a B. He's a lot more relevant than Tom Scott, I can say that. Do I kind of... The thing with, with Tom Cotton is I personally think he's good politically, but I do not see he is presidential material. I think he's really good politically, which is why I'm giving him B. But if it was just on his material without his views, or if they were even toned down a bit, he'd be in the C column, no, no doubt. If you really want, you could probably put him in between B and C. So Tom Cotton, he's good, at, especially domestically, I would say. But I just don't see him being strong. Because like I said, a lot of stuff I focus on anymore is foreign policy. And I do not see Tom Cotton being some strong man on the world stage. I do not see that whatsoever. That's just my opinion, but that's how I see it. Now, Donald Trump, I will give an S next to Ron DeSantis. I think it will come down to these two in the end if Ron DeSantis declares he's running, of course, which he hasn't as of yet. Um, Donald Trump, overall, I think is much the same. There are small differences, but... You can pretty much attribute everything I said about Ron DeSantis earlier for Donald Trump. The thing is, and this is what I was talking about earlier, is Donald Trump had this thing on the world stage which made him powerful in the sense that a lot of liberals complained about this. I mean, you can remember in 2016 that the th saying was that, you know, Trump got elected, World War III would break out within a month of him taking office. But the thing is, Donald Trump's unpredictability kind of made him strong in that sense because – a lot of other countries didn't think about fucking with us too much on the basis that Donald Trump, I mean, kind of like a madman in that sense. You don't know what he's going to do. Um, that's why I think he was so strong foreign policy-wise, and I think that's why he is a good candidate. And I would like to see him again run, and I would have no problem voting with him. There are a couple things that I think he – I think he's very spiteful, and I think that's probably not the best – for the GOP total, but I think he is a solid candidate, and I think at the end of the day, it he will, of course, be way better than people down here or what we have in office at the moment. Donald Trump Jr., uh, definitely a D. I, the thing is with Donald Trump Jr., it's a lot like Eric in a sense where it's more just his father giving him political clout. The difference is I, I don't have a dislike towards him personally, actually. I think Donald Trump Jr. is probably a good guy think he's a good family guy however i see the takes this guy gives and sometimes i think that someone needs to just take this dude's instagram away i he tends to talk about a lot of shit without really seeming that he knows what the fuck he's talking about in a sense that it's like oh well my dad was president so that means i know what's going on i'm gonna give my opinion but a lot of the time it's kind of just like what the fuck it's very like milk toast conservative boomer like memes or it's takes that are just like, really out there stupid, and overall, I just don't see Donald Trump Jr. being a good presidential candidate, and I also just, yeah, I have nothing against him personally, but fuck, please do not let him run. Tucker Carlson, I will give him probably a B. I'd say a B. Now, a lot of people probably get pissed off about that, and you're going to say, well, it's because what he said about Ukraine, how you feel. Yeah, that has something to do with it, because I think geopolitically, Tucker Carlson's kind of a fucking idiot. And I say that because his main advisor when it comes to that is Doug McGregor, who is a fucking idiot. With that said, domestically speaking, I think overall Tucker Carlson is – if he did run, which I don't think he will. I think he's pretty comfy with his current job, if not getting comfier with it. But domestically, I don't think there's an argument that Tucker Carlson's a bad candidate. I don't agree with every single thing he's ever said. Overall, I agree with him a lot. But geopolitically, I really question – how effective he would be on the basis that he's, his entire like surrounding when it comes to that is Tulsi Gabbard and Doug McGregor, who are two of the biggest fucking morons. And, of course, this is my opinion, but, I mean, Doug McGregor has completely made an ass of himself within the last year. I'd argue the last few years, but especially within the last year. 
every month the dude makes a video saying, yep, Ukraine's going to be gone in a week, and the next month he makes another video saying the same fucking thing. Like, okay, Doug, give up the bit. It's sad. And also, again, on Doug's part, remember when Trump bombed Soleimani and Doug was basically chimping out on Tucker's show that same night about how World War Three was it. It's imminent, and I don't know. Like I said, I'm still waiting for those ICBMs. It's been about three and a half years almost, so I don't know, man. So, and again, the other one's Tulsi Gabbard, who I have my own issues with, but I'll get into that in a second. So geopolitically is the main reason why I Tucker Carlson is not higher up. Domestically is good, but geopolitically, if he's going to take the same route he's doing now, that type of appeasement on adversaries is just going to make us weak. Will Hurd, uh, no fucking way. I don't really need to say much about that. Will Hurd is about as rhino as rhino can get for the state of Texas, and that will be it. Now, before I finish, I would like to put an extra person on here because it is not included in here. And that is, but, and the reason I put this in here is because I see a lot of people talking about this, like this would somehow be a good thing. And especially people that talk about Tucker running want this person to be Tucker's VP. So this is worth, I guess you can say, an honorary mention. Tulsi Gabbard, I've given my opinion about her a million times, but she's going to stay right here in this F column because she is a fucking moron. Tulsi Gabbard is essentially the Democrat from 2004, but because she's not the Democrat from 2019 on, I guess all of a sudden we're supposed to praise her like she's some conservative, I guess now because she's going to be doing stuff with the GOP. Ooh. Yeah, um, this is exactly what we don't want because it's not like she's becoming more right-wing. It's just the fact that this party is becoming less right-wing to where Tulsi Gabbard can be considered a Republican. She is a liberal even a leftist, by pretty much every single measure. And the only reason people like her have gotten clout in this is because her military stance, in the sense that you'll see that on Tucker Carlson a lot, her her entire gimmick is basically just calling out the military-industrial complex. Yeah, that doesn't do it for me, because at the end of the day, that military-industrial complex, a lot of people's fucking jobs rely on that. Not only that, but as much as people want to shit on the MIC, if it wasn't for the MIC... We would not be ahead of every adversary we have in military tech. We would not be in such a comfortable position. And that is due to the fact that that, that MIC exists. Let alone a lot of people, especially in the far right that like Tulsi, seem to think it's a purely, oh, well, she's anti-Israel. Yeah, that's not really the case, buddy. She's kind of just... Again, like a Democrat from 2004, and I'm not a war hawk by any means, but I mean, let's be completely honest here and say, like, her entire foreign policy thing is to stay out of everything to a point where we become everyone else's bitch because we don't want to get involved in anything. That That's not being smart. That's being weak. There's a difference between, like, seeing a fire and sticking your hand in it and, you know, just looking at the fire or being smart and grabbing an extinguisher and putting the fire out. See, I prefer the the last option. Tulsi Gabbard prefers to kind of just stand by and let it burn out. Where someone like George Bush would be like, stick your hand in the fire, for example. So, the reason I bring this up is a lot of other people who have not done like this one, but other tiers seem to have her in there. Like, she like, would be a valid candidate. Uh, if Tulsi Gabbard becomes the Republican primary, you bet your ass I will not be voting that year. I will not be voting. So... With all that said, though, this is my 2024 Republican GOP, if you want to call it that, tier list right here. So, on the S column, so this is the candidates that I can really see that are great, is Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. In the A column, which is candidates who I say are, you know, overall they're solid. I like these guys. I don't think they're the best, but I wouldn't have any problem with them. You know, you got Josh Hawley, you got Rick Scott, and you have Scott Walker in the B column, which is mid, but at the end of the day, you know, I think these guys are pretty decent. I have Matt Gates, Mike Pence for his charismatic views, but overall, I don't really think he's that good. Mike Pompeo for his domestic policies, as well as some foreign policy, Ted Cruz, Tom Scott, and Tucker Carlson for the C column, which is mid, but, you know... I'm leaning towards him not really being a good candidate. You know, I have Bongino. I have Mr. Eyepatch Man over here. Eric Trump. 
Greg Abbott, Marco Rubio, Mr. Rand Paul, and Tom Scott, interestingly enough. So the D column, who these are people, again, to reiterate, I think would be bad candidates for one reason or another. I have Steve Bannon, Candace Owens, fucking Susan Rice. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm getting winded here at this point. Abbott, Gnome, fucking Lindsey Graham, Mike, the pillow man, unfortunately, because his optics are terrible, and Donald Trump Jr. Now, the F column. These are people who I would not vote for in hell. As much as I hate to say it, if it came to them or a Democrat, I probably wouldn't vote. Which are people like Charlie Baker, you know, you have Nikki Haley, fucking Larry Hogan, Ivanka Trump, Paul Ryan, Mitt Romney. Just will like, it's just so bad. You know, you got Will Hurd, Ben Sass, and for an honorable mention, of course, Tulsi Gabbard. With that said, I've probably talked myself to death at this point. My mouth is like a desert. So that's it. If you guys like this, please. Give it a like, a comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.